guys, I'm Regina T with Regina T Gaming, and one of the weird issues that I ran into this week was trying to figure out how to make my After Effects transition into a web file, or a WebM file. So doing some research and trying to figure it all out, I realized that there is no one-stop shop that actually explains the entire process to somebody who's brand new. And I ended up having to jump through hoops and figuring out kind of by trial and error to get it to actually convert properly. So let's take a look about um, how I made my transition into a WebM file. You can also, I've done it with most of my stream elements stuff to make the files not so big and have animated overlays for one of my newer setups. <laughs> Of course, this project is massive. Um, we'll just take a look at my transition. So with a transition, it comes out to be about 30 frames. So it's not super large, but it's just big enough where it was causing issues and I was having some serious problems. So what I ended up doing is I went to a very handy website and downloaded this plugin right here. It's free to download, super easy. I have a Windows desktop, but you can also download it from Mac. It works in Premiere Pro and Media Encoder. And I understand some of you are probably looking at that going, what does this have to do with After Effects? Well, if you work in After Effects, one thing that I did learn the hard way <laughs> was to actually export everything into Media Encoder. So how you would actually do that, you have your transition that you've made or your alert or whatever you made in After Effects, go over to File, Export, Add to Media Encoder queue. Wait for Media Encoder to actually load it. Come on thing. <laughs> okay, so once it's into the Media Encoder now, of course I do have the WebM I actually typed that down here and you can actually see it. It's a web video. That's what it's called. Um, but we're actually not going to use that now because I need the transparent background because this is a, a transition. So it comes in, um, it needs to be in a quick time format. And of course, media encoder is a little bit slower. It's not like a go right now kind of thing and even with my extremely powerful computer it's still a little bit slow so you can actually see it you can kind of goof with it you can render it if you need to so you go into the quick time the big mistake i was making was i was leaving it on these which for my normal overlays where there's no transparent background it's fine but for a transparent background, you need one of these two. I use this one. It just works out a little bit better for me. I kind of like the clarity on it. Um, so go there. You don't need to change anything else. You do not need to render this alpha channel. This has the alpha already with it, which is how it has the transparent background. And then hit OK. Pick your file location for where you're actually going to save to. I'm just going to save it to my normal AME file and then hit play. It's a relatively fast process if your file is very small. I rendered one that was five minutes last night. It took me about 15 minutes of rendering time, unfortunately. So it is, the bigger you get, the longer it's going to take, but Media Encoder will actually make the file smaller than what you were initially looking at. So this file actually came out to be, let's go in here. So this file came out to be 49,000 kilobytes. I have no idea what that translates into. I think it's a couple of or like 49 megabytes. Now it is a move file. So you can use this as your transition directly into your OBS, but it's very, very large. Um, mine was still having issues. It didn't want to render it properly. It was getting stuck halfway through. So what I actually ended up doing so I went into this wonderful converter. Um, 
called aconvert.com. It's a free to use. There is a Wondershare program, but it is um, it does have a cost, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Um, but with it, you can go up to 200 megabytes, which isn't that bad, to be honest. Most of the files that I'm exporting now are relatively small. So let's actually take a look. So I have another one. One of my end scenes has some animations to it, so I broke them into pieces. So each portion is a little bit different. So you just click on the thing. This is the second animation that I need. Hit convert. And it will slowly but surely convert it for you. And of course, we're going to speed that up so that we're not sitting here all day because we would sit here all day. Okay. Now, as you can see, here's the actual output file name. What you want to do is click on this little save file. Looks like a download button. Hit add to zip. Click on the link going to download it for you. Click down there, extract, extract all. I like to go in and actually open the file. I'm going to rename it to text typing and scene web m. Okay. So I'm going to actually take it and put it into the area that it's supposed to be in. It actually goes over there. And close all of that out. And you can finally close this stuff. Going into Stream Elements, you just click on My Overlays, and you'll see all of your little overlays, the things that you've saved um, from your themes gallery that you can pick out. Um, I've already gone ahead and created the scene that I'm going to be using. All you would really need to do, though, is you just click on Create Blank Overlay. Overlay name, if you have a game in mind that you want to use it with, you can go ahead and put that in there. I'm going to go ahead and open my overlay here. So I'm going to go to the editor. I'm going to fit it to the screen. That way I can actually see all of the space. Stream Elements does everything in 1920 by 1080. Um, now we're going to insert the back image and I'll walk you guys through the process of actually making this animated overlay work. So we're going to upload all of our pieces. So ending, it's in our video components. So there's that one, that one, that one, and this PNG file. Make sure that I have everything. Yes, okay, open. So it's going to go ahead and download all of that. So I have the four components that are actually going to be used for this. I'll go ahead and go to submitting that image. We're gonna make this guy a bit bigger. Go ahead and fit it to the screen. All right, so there it is. So as you can see, you can actually see the green still in the background, which means it's going to be transparent. Now, the next big piece is to take the gur. I love my gur. He's going to bounce in and he's going to be weird. So we're gonna put him right there. Now, I do need to rename this here. So we'll go ahead and rename it. So this is going to be Gur bouncing in. This is the background image and I misspelled that. Okay, cool. So Gur is going to bounce in. He's behind, of course, the thing and you see he kind of comes flying in because he's in the background. Now I purposely made this so that it's not clean. Um, of course, your images, you can make them as clean or as blurry as you want. Now, one of the other things, I have two other components that need to be put in. So, Gur also slides in. Um, so, we'll go ahead and do that. So do Gur sliding in. He's going to go right here. Oh, but first, let's resize him. All right, Mr. Gur, come here. So as you can see, his animation comes after this one's, and then he slides forward, and he pops into the scene. See? Boop! Gur, of course, is one of my favorite characters, um, so I like having him there. And then we have some text. Looks like the aliens are typing. 
and this one does actually stay over top. Because this is my ending soon scene, make sure that this all lines up where it's supposed to here. All right, come here. This thing is not wanting to cooperate now. Sometimes it takes a little bit of effort to actually get these things to line up. And because of where I had this, okay. So it's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. All right. I don't mind if it's not perfect, but the closer I can get to where it was supposed to be, the better. Okay, so that looks pretty good. All right, so we'll go ahead and put text typing, and we'll go ahead and hit save. Now. Once you hit save, everything pretty much is working. We'll go ahead and hit launch and copy this, which this is the link that you need for your browser source in OBS. Within OBS, adding a browser source is relatively easy. We're gonna go ahead and name this end scene, paste the link, change the actual graphics. I like to delete this, shut down, and refresh when it opens. And we'll kind of go from there. So there that is. That is the final product in OBS. Um, now the other thing that I needed to do with the, the transition, I went ahead and made this into the WebM version. It does end up working, so that makes me really excited. Let's see. Perfect. Um, there is a little bit of delay. It's going to need to be adjusted, and that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Regina T with Regina T Gaming. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have questions, concerns, comments, you can, of course, leave them down below. You can also email me. Um, link to my website is down as well where you can actually get a hold of me or you can message me on Twitter um, or join my discord and you can ask the questions in there as to how I managed to get all of these pieces to work. Um, there's a lot of aspects when you're creating alerts and transitions and animated overlays and different things as our streaming technology gets a little bit bigger and um, more fancy as we get better. Of course, I designed all of these um, around the Invader Zim for this video, which is, you know, one of my favorite television shows. I'll have other ones coming up on my new website, so stick around to actually catch that. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. You can also follow me on Twitter. I do stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hope to see you guys there. You can always ask questions and hopefully I can find you some answers um, while I'm live. Have a good day and I will catch you guys later.